Welcome back, everybody. It's Wisdom Wednesday again. And here on episode number 21, we're hooked on sand carving. Hey, Darren, you want to tell us a little bit about what you have in store for us? Yeah, thanks again, Laura. Uh, number 21 feels like our first one. Um, anyway, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to cover how to sand carve polar camels. I got a quick, easy way to do any color out there in case you're struggling with those. Uh, we're also going to have a Yeti, a aluminum item that's sand carved and color filled with aluminum or uh, black enamel. So those of you that struggle with Surmark out there, uh, this product is going to make it not as durable, but right up there with it. And the last thing we'll cover is the ceramic mug. I have a mug from JDS Industries that's fairly common. We're going to show you how to do a couple of different colors mixed in there. So without any paint. So stay tuned for those items. Uh, as promised, the last uh, several episodes from all of you that give me a lot of these requests, which I love, um, is tips of the week. So the tip of the week is going to be covering how to purge your sand carbon machine. It's six easy steps to keep your machine running like new. So we're going to cover that right after the short video. So stay tuned for that. And we'll do a question and answer right afterwards, as always. And we appreciate everything that you guys ask. All right. Enjoy. Welcome everyone to another edition of Wisdom Wednesday. Dr. Feindred here for you once again. Uh, today's topic is very close to my heart and that's hooked on sand carving. Uh, once you start sand carving, you're hooked. That's what I've been uh, used to for the last 16 years. Uh, I'm addicted. I'm, I'm known for that. So what I want to portray or show some items today are some items that are hooked. Uh, once you get into them, you don't want to stop. Uh, we're going to do a polar camel for JDS Industries. I already did a Yeti previously with a sand carve and a color fill. Another polar camel item with a more stubborn color. I got a nice trick for that. And then we have a JDS mug with a black interior, white exterior. And we're gonna get last even until we hit the frosted black layer. So those are the hooked on sand carving items. The film we're gonna be using once again is the R5 photo resist film. And we're using Accu Black inkjet material. So that's the ingredients to create these fine hooked on sand carving projects. And we're looking forward to getting hooked and enjoy. All right, so here's the application. We have two polar camels, ceramic mug, another polar camel with a more stubborn color to get through. So I'm going to put all four in the machine at the same time. It's more of a production flow. When you do a lot of volume, you can mix it up. You can throw in a crystal piece with your polar camel. You can throw in a metal piece. You can mix it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to put all the pieces in here all at once. 
And since the crystal blast delete machine, all the dust stays down and away from your part. So you're not going to overspray or do any frosting on your piece. Okay? We're going to blast each piece at 30 psi. As I mentioned earlier, some of these colors are very stubborn to get abrasive through. I could have gotten through it with a coarser grit or a thicker mask combined to be the best uh, formula. But again, we're using 180 grit for all of our videos. We're using the same mask material for the majority. So here's what I do with these type of stubborn colors. Okay, I did three passes at 30 psi, like I did on a black one. Okay, I'm not penetrating through the material. It's too stubborn. Okay, basically I'm burning my abrasive on the surface. But what I'm also doing is creating a textured surface. Okay, this surface is very glossy, very smooth, right? Paint's not gonna adhere that or to that layer very well, but it will to the texture layer. So, easy fix. Well, your paint booth, 
find your favorite color, whether it's red, black, any color on the market, look for oil-based enamel, okay? Any solvent-based. Find those at Napa, True Williams, any kind of automotive store carries a solvent-based paint. When you work with solvent-based paints, make sure you wear gloves because it's oil-based, so if it sticks to metal, it's gonna stick to your hand as well, right? You don't want that cleanup later on. So wear gloves, get a booth that's ventilated. Uh, we're gonna run a filter on this machine. And basically just put your item at whatever angle is best for you. And basically you're gonna do a short little burst of paint. Okay. Just a little bit, one little small light layer is all it takes. Paint's gonna adhere to that textured surface. You don't have a whole mess of paint on there. When you peel off the stencil, you're not gonna peel away paint with it because the paint's sticking to the surface now because it's that oil-based enamel. Two items that we sand carved and color filled because when you sand carve, that's how I got it. Okay, so you get like a gray look, okay, but it doesn't really pop. Okay, so I put a little paint on the other side with the image I just sand carved. So what I'm gonna do here is just remove the mask. I did let the paint dry for about 30 minutes. Uh, Belton does dry quickly, but you know, just to be safe, I recommend an hour or more. Um, but Again, this is 30 minutes time to get it filled. So it comes off pretty clean, as you can see here. Okay. A little piece there to pick out. Pretty neat. So you can run this under water as well, because it is an oil-based enamel, so it doesn't come off in water. I'm just gonna rub it off here. I don't use my fingers. Comes off pretty easily. Again, if you want to use water, you can easily do that as well. Give it a good polish. Again, the paint's not affected by any kind of glass cleaner <clears throat> or water. So you get a nice polish on there. So there's your image without a color fill and with a color fill. So it popped quite a bit. So it's good for hand wash. Here's another item that I found around the old campfire. Aluminum, right? So I sand carved this piece and I color filled it because I wouldn't get a very good contrast without the paint. So I got to use automotive paint. This is Delton. Let it dry for about 20 minutes. And now I'm removing the mask. Again, don't let it sit longer to dry. That's perfectly fine. Take as much off as I can here with the tape. So the blood's rubbing. So here we go. I'm gonna take my clean ray once again. Just kind of give it a little push. Make sure it's clean. And again, you can run this under water. And I'll get it off a little quicker. But just for video purposes, I like to do this effect. Make sure the paint's completely dry if you do this method. A little smear. All right, so here's a wrap on our hooked on sand carving. These are the items we did today. The ceramic mug, see the frosted black, from sand carving, exclusive. You got the Yeti, sand carved, color filled. Polar Camel, sand carving, color fill. Aluminum, sand carved and color fill. These items in the back row, whether it's the Polar Camel or Yeti, are easily sand carvable. I don't think color is necessary in those. A uh, little extra one is my coffee mug. I, I do a lot of Yetis and Polar Camels for my personal coffee habit. You know, it's kind of a hooked on carving, I'm hooked on coffee. So here's my mug, the full wrap with a, it's kind of a texture, kind of 
we design on there. So that's another idea, full wraps. All right, another idea is like personalizing. You can take your lures, put initials on there, put, you know, I'm the best fisherman ever, uh, whatever you want to do, throw it on there. You have a lure, it's personalized. You can put it in your cap, right? A lot of people like to do that around here at least. Uh, you can do your leather item. You can do any type of aluminum, any kind of metal product. Um, I wouldn't advise doing any lead, um, but any other product in your toolbox likely can be sand carvable. Even the acrylic items, like this toolbox, you can carve that. Um, it doesn't really show up very well in carving, but you can color fill it once again. So those are the items that we're going to wrap on today. Um, next week, we're going to focus more on the blazer laser material. Um, we like to call it an easy peel, like an orange, like a fruit that's easy to peel. It's good for good full wraps, like an orange. It's a fruit, right? You can peel clean like an orange. You don't remove it with water like an orange. So it's very similar to that fruit, right? So we're going to show some technique with how to wrap it on a big curved surface. We're going to show some of the tips and tricks on why people use this product. And we're going to also go through a video that I did with David over at Trotec Laser. He's also known as Laser Dave. Um, Dr. Feingrit and Laser Dave, we tend to do these other events outside of this. And we're going to showcase some of his talents as well. So look forward to the next week's episode of Blazer Laser uh, Sand Carving. And I hope you enjoyed the Hooked on Sand Carving and have a blast and blasted confidence. Hey, Darren, once again, some nice tips and tricks there on uh, how to feed your sand carving addiction <laughs> and uh, personalize some great yeah. items. <laughs> so, uh, definitely appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah, I a couple hear things you've in got there. a uh, tip of the week for us. Yeah, I'll get to that. But one more thing is, you know, I mentioned in there, all my polar camels and yetis are personalized in some way. This is the one I brought in today. I didn't have it for the video. This was sand carved, left the mask on, and then the way I got it glossy was I used glass bead. So if you spray it with the glass bead media, you get back to that polished metal look. So just another way, in case you want to get that laser look that people really like out there. So... Get the matte look with sand carving or the glazer or the glossy look rather. So, so there you go. Um, yeah, tip of the week. Uh, as promised, we're going to cover purging your sand carving machine, also known as flushing your machine. So as you know, when you have problems in your draining pipes at home, you got to flush it, right, to get a better draining system at home. Well, the same thing applies to sand carving machines. Once they start getting a little sporadic, you know, grit kind of clumps up a little bit. You're getting sand dunes. You're getting all kinds of inconsistent grit flow. So, and that's usually caused by either not using your machine for a long period, which is called dormant abrasive. It kind of settles, creates hardening. Uh, or more commonly is because the abrasive is picking up so much static electricity, called static discharge over time. And that's if you're sand carving a lot of polar camels like we did in the video, because it's got metal it's got that contact in there that's going to create a lot more uh, electrical um, impulse. So the way to keep your machine run smoothly is to do a purging. Uh, I recommend doing this every six months or maybe every year. Uh, depends on your abrasive flow. All right. So here's on the screen the six easy steps. Uh, this applies to any crystal blast machine, which have the reclaimer, which is all of them. So if you have a Pro or a Pro X2, a Navigator, you have our Elite Machine, Pioneer, uh, Master. We have several different models that we sell. Um, this applies to all of them because they all have abrasive reclaimers, which is what the little drum is on the side or the back of your machine, which separates the dust from the abrasive. All right. So you can see the six easy steps. I don't need to run through everything. If you guys want to have this copy, just email me at the address djones at iconics.com or email your rep 
maybe Andy Herbatka, um, Peter Norman. Yeah, email us and we can get you this surge or purging your sand carver in six easy steps. It's going to really save you a lot of time, frustration, trying to figure things out on abrasive flow. All right. Any questions on that? Yeah, I'll cover that in the Q&A. But I think uh, that's a great tip for the week, I think, right? Master, I know uh, maintenance tips are always nice. <laughs> And so, well appreciated. Now, let's see. We have a, a few questions waiting for us. And we also want to give a shout out to Michaela as uh, she says, good afternoon, Dr. Feingrit, <laughs> and that she missed us. Yay. So, it's good to see you back. And Absolutely. speaking of yeah. Michaela, she has our first question. She says, do you suggest moving the nozzle in a linear pattern on powder coated mugs? She's always done circular motions, but she wonders if linear makes a difference. Mm. Great question, Michaela. Great having you back. Um, the dream team is back in action. Um, one question there is the circle pattern, which I've done many times in my videos. I like to do circles on glass and ceramic because it cuts away at the material quicker and a smoother pattern. All right. Now, polar camels depends on the color. Um, the yellow one in the video, it, it wouldn't have mattered if I went circular or linear. It wouldn't have mattered because the abrasive was too fine to get through that shellac. Um, but if it's a like the black one I did in the video, that black's easier to cut through. Okay. So if you do circular motions, you do cut away quicker. And the analogy there is like a drill bit, okay? Because the drill bits cut quicker than like a screwdriver, right? Because it's mm -hmm. circular patterns, okay? Not just a thing stabbing at it. So. So yeah, the circular pattern does work more efficiently on creating carving depth quicker, and it gives you a smoother finish. Plus, it allows you to do all the doming and the, you know, deep carving like we talked about in previous videos. So yeah, do the small little circular motions anytime you can. Um, and the the trick once you get through that enamel, it's like breaking through the ice on a lake. You're gonna open up the hole a lot faster. So. So if you center in one area, break through, and then do circular patterns, eventually that hole is going to get bigger and bigger, and you're going to etch the whole design quicker. So that might be a video down the road. That's a great question. <laughs> it really is. Test the difference between uh, some of your nozzle techniques and how well things blast. It's always good to see how things go. Absolutely. Uh, so do you have any other further tips on... Uh, helping get through some of the coding or as you had mentioned earlier, maybe changing some of the styles when you're yeah. done and uh, things have been painted. Uh, you know, the best advice I can give you if you have a large volume of polar camels to do is to get a coarser abrasive. I know it gets off our, our whole 180 fine grit thing, but yeah, if you go like a 120 or a 150 mesh abrasive, there's more weight to the punch. So that weight's gonna create uh, more effectiveness. It's like, you know, weighing 200 pounds on a sheet of ice instead of 150 pounds. You're gonna break through the ice quicker. So at a heavier weight. Now, the one thing though is the mask would have to be thicker as well. Let's say you went to a hundred grit or a 120, you wanna go to maybe a six mil or even a 10 mil material. Um, and you can really crank up the air pressure as well at that point and really generate quick sand carving depth. But again, is your customer willing to pay for that extra time and all the extra material and abrasive and so forth? If you just do that etching I did in the video with the yellow mug, color fill it, they might be okay with that. Now, if you want to get to that, you know, gray look with the gloss mm -hmm. or the matte finish, yeah, then yeah, you may want to go to a coarser grit as well as a thicker mask. Okay. Uh, or a thicker mask, I use the MMX. It's a green 10 mil that we make. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I use that a lot on material. And I use like a 120 or a 150 mesh. So, All yeah. right. Well, let's see. Speaking about our color fill there and or lack of color fill. But in this case, they have some questions on some more or less care of the color fill item. Did you use clear coat spray over the Belton color spray paint to cure the color or will it wash off in the dishwasher? All right, 
I did not use a clear coat spray. Uh, Belton has a built-in clear coat. Um, so it is good for that. Now, the question there is, let's say you want more of a glossy look because the Belton has a matte finish. They have a, you know, satin, they have a glossy. Mm -hmm. Then what you could do is put a glossy clear coat over the matte black and that's going to create a glossy black. Um, it also does protect it two times over. So yeah, if you're really worried about the color fading or coming off with your dishwater, you know, where you have other dishes going, yeah, put a clear coat on there as well. Um, that's going to protect it for many, many more years and many more washes. Now in a dishwasher, I don't know if Yeti or Polar Camel would recommend their items in a dishwasher. I know most, you know, insulated mugs, you're not supposed to do that. So um, most of those are hand wash only, but yeah, if you had to run through dishwasher, definitely want the clear coat on there, but you can't advertise it as a dishwasher safe product, just so you know. That's, that's into legality, so yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't go there. Good that's to know. You, for do a, if you do an etch like this, glossy or matte, without any paint, then it is 100% dishwasher safe. Okay. Perfect. So, Darren, at Iconics Imaging over there, do we have any sales coming up that uh, our viewers might want to know about if they're interested in purchasing any of the products to, you know, feed their addiction here with sand yeah. carving? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, Labor Day is coming up. You know, a great time to get outdoors, do some fishing, camping. Maybe those ideas in the video may help. Um, but, yeah, we're running Labor Day specials on all the films. 15% uh, off is the starting percentage off. It goes up to 30%. So all those videos, all the products, wrap the mask, R3, R5, MMX, any of the videos that have our product in there are all on sale. So it's a great time to get work in and, and get outdoors, right? Definitely, definitely. Get outdoors, enjoy some of those polar camels that you can carve. Uh, keep your beverages warm as the fall wears on and we get into winter. Yeah, so uh, enjoy it while you can. And if you're interested in getting any of that supplies to help you out with that, go ahead and visit our website at iconicsimaging.com and or call one of your wonderful sales reps like Darren and they're always willing to help you out. So at this moment, it looks like we're at the end of our live questions. Unless anybody wants to chime in out there, <laughs> uh, we're about ready to sign off and see you next week. Yeah, so I'm going to enjoy my hooked on sand carving mugs and, and uh, feed my coffee addiction and my sand carving addiction later down the road. So looking forward to the next week. Uh, as you know, by the color, we're going to cover blazer orange laser mask more in detail from what we covered with Trotech Laser and Laser Dave. So looking forward to working with you on that project. And uh, any questions in the meantime, any feedback on our audio or video, um, anything that you may hear on your end that we don't hear on our end would be appreciated. So yeah, chime in with any questions. We're here to listen. Yeah, we definitely love hearing from all of our viewers. Uh, also, if you would like to see more of us, subscribe and we'll be here weekly for you. We do have one last straggler question that came in. Oh. Darren, does cold affect sand carving materials? Does cold weather? effect so yep. like temperatures blank, the blank substrate not the sandblasted uh, item. just that's materials there you go and um the i'm assuming the film or the substrates and how yeah, they interact together i think i know where they're going with this uh if it's a cold substrate it's hard to get anything to adhere to it uh the easy test is to take a piece of masking tape and stick it to it masking tape doesn't stick nothing's gonna stick to it so but yeah, cold items are harder for the film to adhere to. So you may have to warm it up to get it to stick better. Or what you could do is apply our glue. If you put our glue, wipe it on over a cold surface, let the glue dry, then apply the film. So whichever method works. Um, but yeah, cold does affect it. Afterwards, no, the etch is there forever. Outdoor, indoor, 
that's the beauty of sand carving is it's, it's a forever image. So how about cold temperatures and film storage? Do they affect your film at all? Um, we do recommend the film storage in a cool, dry, derrick area because this question comes up a lot when we have specials because people are trying to buy film that will last them for a year, maybe two years, so they could buy more in bulk to get a better pricing. So, yeah, storage is very important in that regard. So cool, dry, dark environment. Now, when you buy a rabbit mask, for example, this is actually a tip. Okay. Um, you buy a 100-foot roll, and you use like 10 feet of it, and you have 90 feet to spare. And you're like, I may not use it for a year. Okay. So what you do then is find a refrigerator. Okay. Go to your kitchen. Go to your whatever. Find a little refrigerator. Put the film in there. And that film is going to last several years longer because the refrigerator is the best environment that's cool, dry, and dark. Unless you leave your door open. <laughs> so don't leave your door open <laughs> on the refrigerator. But yeah, do the refrigerator trick with our film. Um, and that's going to extend the life several years. And that's pre image pieces as well. If you image a piece and you may not use it for a year, put it in a foil package or Ziploc bag or whatever, throw it in the fridge. But Perfect. again, cool, dry, dark it could be a cabinet, it could be, you know, a wine cellar, it could be a number of things that are cool, dry, and, or cool, dry, and dark. But yeah, that, that'll work. I think that'll save you some time and some money down the road. Certainly. It's always great to know how to extend the product life as much as you can, because I know we're all trying to get the most we can out of uh, our sand carving equipment. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that tip. And it looks like that is the end of our question feed at the moment. So in that case, I'm going to tell you to have a blast and we'll <laughs> see you all next weekend. Well, and, next week and, on and Wednesday. Of, and blast of confidence, will you? All right. <laughs> Perfect. See you guys next week. Yep. See you next time.